Hey what's up guys, JB here and if you've been following my channel recently you would notice or have seen that I've made a super king size bed frame. So I've made the bed, I've put that together and I've also treated it or painted it with some Rust-Oleum weathered wood paint. So at the moment it's looking pretty nice and I'll give you a, a quick look just by angling the camera down here. So this is the weathered look supposed to be weathered look but we like it anyway because it's nice and white so the next thing to do here is to make the headboard now you might have seen in a previous video I had a big old lump of MDF sitting behind the bed well that is going to be the headboard and that's right here at the moment sitting up on my trestles so what we're going to do is make a headboard I'm going to show you the easiest and quickest way to do it so uh, stay tuned the only issue I was thinking about MDF is trying to staple the fabric into this but I am going to be making a softwood frame going round this to give it a, a thicker look to give it some thickness and actually the material is going to be stapled into that so there's going to be no issues with stapling I've kept it indoors so it's been nice and dry there's no moisture got to it so that's all good because that's really important with this MDF you leave it outside for too long and it like a banana nice flat bit of MDF just over here we've got a lovely mattress topper bought this a couple of years ago and actually we're not using it anymore so that's going to be absolutely perfect for the padding this is going to be a nice padded headboard then I've got some wading I just had some wading delivered yesterday so basically just some thin polyester it's quite spongy so that will go round the mattress topper or the sponge and also round the headboard and then the missus got some of this lovely champagne velvet fabric <laughs> look at that wow so that's going to be get that in the light now. oh yeah check me out <laughs> uh, so that's going to be the the covering for the headboard and I think it's going to look pretty good once it's on there it's going to look pretty classy now the other thing that I am going to be doing and something else that we got hold of here is putting some buttons on and they are going to be looking a little bit something like that there we go so I've got 20 of these and I'll explain to you how and why I'm, I've chosen to do it the way I'm doing it but these are basically screws with a cap on them so you've got a screw here and you've got this kind of washer that goes on there so that will be screwed into the headboard and then you basically take your cap and then you put that on the end so you've got a screw with a nice diamond on the end I wish we'll do those later um, been thinking about this quite a bit and and I want to see how it looks first without these and then if I think I do want them then I can add them after so I'll show you how I'm going to do that a bit later most importantly got my cup of tea first thing we need to do is to attach these posts so I've got these 2x2 two two softwood posts uh, well they were in quite long length actually but I've cut these down to a meter they're going to be screwed into the back of the headboard and then they're going to be carriage bolted to the bed frame so they will literally sit on the headboard something like that I have got three of these this is a wide headboard this is a wide bed super king size you know what I'm saying the headboard itself was 1.9 meters long so one in the middle one either end with the post cut to one meter this is 900 high so I'm going to overlap it by about 240 millimeters so it's got plenty of room to attach to the frame of the bed so what I've done here is I've actually marked on this side exactly where I want the posts I've done them about 250 from the edge here and one exactly in the middle I've also marked it where I'm going to put five screws 
So I'm going to screw these down. I was thinking about gluing it. I might not do that for now. I can always do it later. Yeah, I think I will, uh, I'll leave the glue out for now and I'll just screw it. I'm going to use five fifties uh, screws. And what I'm going to do is actually go through the MDF into the timber. Now you could actually go through the timber and into, into the MDF. But the MDF is only 18 millimeters, so you haven't got a lot of depth for the screw to really grip. Right then, so I've marked all the holes out for where the holes need to go. And I'm just going to drill those out now. So we'll drill these and then we'll countersink them. You don't want to see me drill all of them, do you? Let's forward to the countersinking. Well, I have decided to glue these now after a little bit of thought. Um, I don't think it'll make a huge difference, but yeah, you know what, I thought I don't need to take these off. So let's, let's go for it, let's stick some glue on here, just to make sure. Now I've marked the timber here, as in how much it's going to be sticking out from the end of the headboard. So let's just get a load of glue along here. Okay, set the combination square for 250. So if I can put that there, I can put this underneath and I know exactly where it needs to go. I'm just going to pre-drill that a little bit. that in nicely. That will be enough to hold it now. And then we'll just double check that this is still the right distance in. Yeah. Just a tiny pile up hole there. That's good, one done, two to go. In order to get this middle post in the right position, what I've done is used the end post and I've clamped it to the board right next to where this one needs to be. So I can just literally put that underneath, hold it in place and uh, job done. That makes it nice and easy. Little pilot hole. now is just to get some of my 2 by one that I've bought and just put that around the edge because that's going to give this a thicker look. What I don't want to do is have this really thin headboard so I'm going to have a bit of 2 by one all the way around the edge so we'll get that in and screw it on.
If I had a bit more space to manoeuvre, I'd definitely spin this round and do it the other way. Good, that's all the frame done now. Got the posts on, they're screwed in, they're glued, got all the 2B1 for the frame done. So, next thing, I think what I'm going to do is just drill some holes in the legs here to take the carriage bolts. So, let's put some holes in there, work out exactly where we need to put those. Now the ends of the bed are not that deep, so in terms of where I put my bolts, ideally I'd like to put them really far apart to give it a lot more stability, but I can only currently put them here, where you can see these two lines, because the, the, the bed, the side of the bed actually only comes to about here. What I might do in the future, we'll see how this goes, is actually put another block underneath the bed so then I can put another bolt further down on here. There we go, that'll be perfect. So it's quite a tight fit. It's an M8 bolt. I've got an 8mm drill bit, so that is going to be, you know, a little bit tight, but that's good. So I'm going to drill the rest out. Right, well I've put all the holes in the posts on the headboard and what I've done is put it onto the bed and I've drilled the holes in the back panel here of the bed and I'll tell you what, look, that is pretty solid, I'm, I'm loving that. Two bolts here, two coach bolts here, I've got two coach bolts there and I've just got one in the top there at the moment because I've got this centre rail that goes right in the centre. Let's crack on and get it finished. Before I put the foam and the fabric on, I'm going to drill the holes where the Demonte buttons are going. And then what I'll do once I've put the fabric on and decided that I definitely want the buttons on there, then I've got a steel rod which I'm going to poke through, which I can then screw down the, the buttons with. So uh, I'm just going to drill these now. I'm going to do next is just take this edge off both sides of the headboard just so when the fabric goes round it it doesn't feel too sharp just just literally that edge so we'll just run the plane over there just a couple of times like that that's all I want just don't want anything sharp So next we'll get the foam on the headboard. If I wasn't putting the buttons in, I would definitely use some kind of spray adhesive. Um, maybe something like Gorilla Spray Adhesive, but um, if your name's Tessica Brown, don't use it on your hair for God's sake. <laughs> so uh, yeah, Gorilla Glue's not good for your scalp. Not a lot of people know that. But anyway, here we go. So that this is looking good. I'm going to get this roughly into position. Get it as close to the edges as possible. I want to take this edge off. I don't want this sharp edge on the fabric because I did try it earlier wrapping some fabric round it and it almost creases the corner. So 
I'm just going to cut that very edge off just so it makes it a little bit more rounded. Now I'm not too worried about this being a little bit roughly cut because I've got the wading going over the top of the foam and then the fabric's going over the wading so there's no way you're going to see any of these little cut marks on the, on the foam. The edge has been taken off all around the foam now so we'll get the wade in and we'll put this over. I'm going to need to trim this. It's quite a large piece. So but I want a bit of overhang because I obviously want to be able to wrap it round and staple it. When we're putting the wading down we only need a few staples just to hold it in place. When we do the fabric we'll put a lot more in. So I'm just going to go ahead and staple it with my uh, DeWalt staple gun. Nice bit of kit this. If uh, you haven't got one or you want one, there's a link down there. And also a nice selection pack of 140 series staples. For the wading and fabric, I'm going to use these 10 mil staples. Probably a bit excessive, but I'd rather have a bit more than not enough. So we'll just load those into the gun. There we go. Oh yeah, looking and feeling nice already. So that's the wading on. Not too tight, doesn't need to be. What we'll do is get the fabric on now. Now the only piece of fabric we could get was two metres wide and it's a little bit short. I could have done with another 10 centimetres. That would have been perfect. So I'm going to have to pull this a bit tight and rather than staple it right on the inside of the wooden frame I'm just going to have to staple it on the back edge. You're still not going to see it but ideally all the way round. Top and bottom no problem that's fine I've got plenty here I can tuck that right behind but the two sides are going to have to be on that back edge. So what we want to do is put a few in one end just in the middle and then exactly the same on this end. Now I've got my man Brian Lightfoot to thank for this, teaching me a bit of uh, upholstery. <laughs> my exhibition days. Staple a bit one side, then back to the other side, keep it nice and even. Once you've got the fabric pulled from either end, which was a little bit tight, we're just going to do the same with the top and bottom. So there's still a bit of looseness in the fabric, but as soon as we start to pull it top and bottom, that'll pull it nice. What I've decided, because of the tightness of the fabric, I'm not going to put the buttons on. I did really want to put them on, but because this is so tight, I'm a little bit worried about putting so many in and them not actually screwing in and gripping enough. And actually, I'm more than happy with the way it looks. So um, I'm going to leave it as it is and get it back on the bed.
So we've got that bolted now and it is all in place and it's feeling pretty solid. And let's get the rest of the bed together and see how it looks with all the bedding and sheets and all that lot on. So that's how it looks with the mattress on. Let's get the pillows and duvet. Fantastic, job done. What do you think? I hope you found this video interesting and perhaps you'll take something away from it. If you haven't seen the making of the bed, don't forget to check out that video. I'll leave a link at the end of this video so you can go check that out. So don't forget to subscribe, share and like guys, that would be fantastic. How's that for a Valentine's gift? <laughs> well, she's happy. <laughs> cool man, I'm done. I'll see you on the next video.